How would you feel about living next door to a bonfire the size of a small tower block? Well, for some people in Northern Ireland, this is an annual reality. Towering infernos made from hundreds, even thousands of wooden pallets burn just meters from people's homes across the country in July. Often Irish flags and posters of political opponents are also burnt in the blaze. And if anyone tries to stop them being built so tall or dismantle a dangerous pile, well, they'll need police protection. Because for some, these aren't just bonfires, these are political statements. So let's talk about marching season. Hi, and welcome to So What? I'll explain a series about the stories you should know a little bit more about. Please subscribe to our channel if you want to see some more of our videos, and why not give this one a like if you learn a little something today. In this video, we're talking about Northern Ireland's marching season. It starts with the Protestant Apprentice Boys March in Derry, Londonderry on Easter Monday, hits peak in about mid-July, but goes on until October. That's six months of marching by Unionists who are predominantly Protestant and Nationalists who are predominantly Catholic. So what's with the bonfires? The biggest Unionist march takes place every year on July 12th. Thomas Copeland from Challenge NI told us why July 12th is so important for Unionists. In very simple terms, the 12th of July is a Protestant cultural celebration in Northern Ireland, has been historically. Indeed, the 12th of July was initially a celebration of Protestant ascendancy over the Catholic population of Ireland. Now that's changed a lot since, but for a lot of loyalist communities, that is Unionist, it's a date and a holiday that they hold very dear because it's one of very few real chances of, of, of cultural expression that we see in Northern Ireland. Marching and parades have such a contentious history that anyone who wants to hold a march has to apply for permission from the official parades commissions. But almost as important are these massive bonfires lit by Protestants across Northern Ireland on July 11th. The last time there was serious trouble was back in 2015, when clashes between Unionists and the police got pretty ugly. Things have been relatively peaceful in the years since, but 2018 saw a return to the violence with trouble breaking out in a number of historically contentious areas. So what's the problem with these bonfires? These bonfires reach extreme heights. Some of them stretch to 20 stories. And they aren't happening in a controlled environment or in a field in the middle of nowhere. These bonfires have been lit in built up areas just meters from people's homes. It's not just when they're set alight that these bonfires pose a risk. There are a number of occasions where these huge structures collapse before they've even been lit. And all this means that fire services have to be on constant standby every year for the risk of an accident or an uncontrollable fire. You do see sinister elements creeping in, particularly in urban areas, flags um, of the Irish Republic being burned. You see bonfire posters of Sinn Féin, which is um, a nationalist party being burned. And you see, even in some cases, you see effigies of, of well-known well -known nationalist politicians being burned on these bonfires. Routinely on bonfires um, and daubed in graffiti in loyalist areas will be the slogan K-A-T, kill all tags, tags being a um, derogatory term for a Roman Catholic. As a Catholic, definitely feel threatened by certain aspects of the uh, 12th of July celebrations. So what happened this year? This year's trouble started when police tried to dismantle some bonfires that they believe were dangerous. The fire built each year on publicly owned land was five times higher than recommendations from the fire service. So police gave local groups the opportunity to dismantle it. Instead, in the early hours of July 11th, local youths torched the bonfire before it could be torn down. This led to dozens and dozens of police riot vans being deployed to protect the fire services as they were being attacked as they tackled the blaze. Houses just meters from the blaze had to be doused with water because of the intensity of the fire. At another site where two Protestant estates and a Catholic estate meet by a busy road, another bonfire had to be taken apart by police and contractors who had to wear masks to protect their identities. These two incidents sparked a number of violent attacks in East Belfast, resulting in dozens of vehicles being hijacked and torched by masked youths. So what's the history and politics of these bonfires. The bonfires and parades are an integral part of Northern Ireland's Protestant history. The 12th of July is a celebration of the victory of the Protestant King William of Orange over the Catholic King James at the Battle of the Boyne. Parades and bonfires have been held to celebrate the victories ever since the 1700s, and they've been central to the Union's social calendar. Because the bonfires and marches are essentially the celebration of a victory of a Protestant king over a Catholic one, 
Some say they are intrinsically political. Even in the 1800s, the marches were considered contentious and they were briefly banned in the 1830s. But for the Orange Order, the celebration is integral to their existence. July 12th is the reason the order was formed. So what some see as a legitimate concern over health and safety, others consider a direct attack on unionist history and their identity. Um, and lots of loyalist communities in Northern Ireland in particular would, would believe that they've conceded quite a lot when it comes to the peace process in Northern Ireland and as a result are very protective over the 12th of July and all that it has come to meant. Always a very contentious and uh, contested time uh, in Northern Ireland because you have uh, people who um, are from the nationalist side of the community who want there to be a united Ireland and who um, sometimes feel threatened by the uh, perhaps intimidating aspects of the 12th of July celebrations. What about the other marches? It's not just about the bonfires and march on July 12th. Marching season sees parades and protests by all sides, though the vast majority are held by unionists. Last year, there were 2,598 unionist parades compared to 140 nationalist parades. Some of these marches are particularly controversial. One of the most prominent Republican parades is an anti-internment march. It takes place in early August, and for a number of years, it's been banned from entering Belfast city centre. In Drum Cree, the Orange Order have been banned from marching down the Garvahi Road. There have been numerous incidents of violence in this area, stretching back to the 70s. The march was banned under the Good Friday Peace Agreement in 1998, but became notorious when three young Catholic boys were burnt to death after their home was petrol bombed during the violence that followed the ban. In protest to the ban, the Orange Order tried to make the march down the Garvahi Road anyway. They've been trying every Sunday for 20 years. So what about the influence of the Troubles? Most issues surrounding the marches centre around rival groups trying to enter either nationalist or unionist areas. Many nationalists argue the Orange Order marches are purely sectarian and triumphalist, while many unionists say hardline Republican marches commemorate the acts of terror groups like the IRA. The violent political and religious history of these marches is inseparable from what happens today. In fact, this year, dissident Republicans used the cover of the 12th of July to launch attacks against Protestant areas in Derry, Londonderry. This led to several days of violence as youths hijacked vehicles, attacked Protestant estates, and threw petrol bombs at police officers and passing vehicles. This violence was linked to the bomb attack on Jerry Adams' house in Belfast and had been taken as a signal from the dissident groups. They still don't see the Good Friday Agreement as legitimate, and in their view, Sinn Féin sold out. In the Northern Irish calendar, the 12th of July and the 12th week has become a time uh, when cross-community tensions flare up, regardless of their origins. But it's not all violence and anger. The events of this year act as a reminder that certain parts of Northern Ireland are still prone to violence during parade season. But in response to the violence, in Derry, London Derry, a cross-community march took place with no political motive, just a plea for peace. Whenever it comes to these um, small amounts of violence in Derry, that they're by no means supported by the vast majority um, in terms of politicians, in terms of the people who live there. Um, that's not representative of the people in Northern Ireland today. There have also been calls on both sides to limit the burning of political posters and any dangerous materials on bonfires. Recent years have seen a drastic reduction in violence during marching season. Most are hoping that 2018 was a rarity and not a return to the serious and regular violence of the past.